Let's paint a colorful sky. Uh, before I start, one of the first things I do is I spray all my colors with a spray bottle. Let them soften up while I'm figuring out what I'm going to paint or draw. And uh, I'm going to recreate a sky that I did uh, in Tucson, Arizona last year when we were doing a workshop there. So let me run through the colors here. I'm going to start with some ultramarine blue. I'm going to add some phthalo blue to that. And I always have a test sheet between my palette and my painting. You got to realize that your colors are going to dry lighter than they look when they're wet. So it's usually a good idea to add a little more pigment before you start. Okay, let's just lay in some sky. This is ultramarine blue and phthalo blue. There we go. I'm going to hit that a little stronger yet. Okay, I'm going to rinse that brush out. Hit the bottom with clear water. Again, I'm looking at this blue up in here and it looks like it's still going to end up lighter than I want it. So I'm going to hit that with some more pigment yet here. As you notice, I use a lot of water. It's real juicy. There we go. I like that better. It's important to use a, br a big brush too. Use the biggest brush you can for as long as you can in your paintings. It'll, your painting will stay fresh longer and not as tired and overworked. Okay, so while I'm doing that, while that's sitting there, I'm going to mix up some lemon yellow. Now obviously blue and yellow together are going to make a green. So I'm uh, just going to barely touch this really, really light blue in here. So we don't want green in the sky here. Okay. Just a little bit stronger right in here. All right, now while that's wet, I'm going to add in some clouds into that. So I'm going to take some ultramarine blue, some quinacridone violet, Again, test it on my sheet here, see what it looks like. Okay, that looks pretty good. All right, let's just lay in some, some strokes here. Like I say, it's all nice and juicy, nice and wet. And I'm going to tip the board right now. I want these colors to run down a little bit. I think I'm even going to put a cloud right in here. I fanned this mop brush out so I can get a little bit of a different look to the clouds up in here. Okay, maybe a little bit over here. If I don't like an area like that, I'll just take a damp brush and just kind of pull it away, pull it off of there. Okay, now while that's wet, it's all, the whole thing is still wet yet. I'm going to come in here with some uh, gamboge or Indian yellow. They'll, either one will work. And I'm going to actually come in here with some, some cadmium orange.
Okay, that's pretty good. I think I'll dry that right now and then we'll continue. Okay, the uh, mop brush that I'm using is by Creative Mark. It's called the Harmony Squirrel Quill and this is a number six. This works great for putting in big washes. It works great for uh, foliage on trees or bushes. It fans out really nice and uh, I've found it to work better than the other mop brushes uh, brands that I've tried. So this would be a great brush to get. Um, another thing I use, especially if I need a straight line, um, I'll use this five gallon, gallon uh, paint stirring stick. This works great uh, when you really do need a straight line. For this one here, let's just, we're gonna make this a, 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 a Arizona sky or Arizona landscape in here. So I'm gonna take the quinacridone violet, some ultramarine blue, I'm just going to lay a distant mountain range in there. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, show you the finished piece um, for time's sake. I'm going to show you the finished piece and shows the foreground in here and a big cactus in here. Um, but let's just come in here like this. The idea is to hold this at a 45 degree angle. Rest your knuckles there so you can hold it like that. And then ride the metal ferrule against the wood. And ride your fingers on here. That controls the height of the brush. So I can come in here, make a really, really nice straight line. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to keep this ruler here. That'll help me keep from going below that line. I'm just going to come in here and put in some mountain shapes here. So you can see how easy that is to come in here with a ruler. A lot of I don't use it very often, but when I need a really when I want a really straight line, this works great. Okay, now that I'm looking at that, I'm thinking, well, maybe that's maybe that's just a little bit dark. I want them to feel more distant. So I'm gonna come in here with a damp brush and just pull out some of that color. That's nice to know, people. A lot of people think you can't make changes in watercolor. You have to live with what you, once you put it down, you have to live with it. Um, you can manipulate it quite a bit. Um, it's a lot more forgiving than, uh, than people think. Okay, I'm going to stop with that and dry that. And then I'm going to show you, uh, all I have is a photocopy of the original painting that I did. But I think that'll give you the information that, that, to see how I handled the foreground. And I did use a mop brush for a lot of this in the foreground. Okay, here's the photo, uh, photocopy of the, uh, from the original painting that I did. And you can see I put a cactus in here, something in the foreground. And uh, just some quick strokes. There's not a lot of detail. There's edges in here, but it's all using the mop brush, except for the, uh, except for the cactus. I used a round brush. But other than that, I fanned out this mop brush. And it works great for putting in these areas. Shifting colors in here a little bit. Um, but it's a wonderful brush. And you notice this has a green tip. Um, that's something I put on there because I share these brushes at my workshops. And uh, that way it's easy for me to collect them at the end of class. So don't, uh, don't look for that green tip. Thanks for watching.